That's a must. That's a must, or you must see that. I hear these phrases and others like it from time to time. As I went to the old standby, the online Merriam-Webster dictionary, it became apparent that the word must is complicated. It can mean a suggestion based on preference. Must, by one definition, means it is an opinion, such as you must try this avocado dip. It is scrumptious. That is a suggestion based upon an opinion. You are not required to eat the avocado dip. Or, you must see the Statue of Liberty if you are in New York. Again, it is not a requirement, but an option based on an opinion. Must, according to our trusty dictionary, can be defined by the above examples. However, when there is a definition which it is not an option, but a requirement, a command, a legal requirement, for example, the law says you must stop at a stop sign. It is not an option or an opinion. If you are a citizen of the United States, you are required to pay taxes. And if you want to drive, you must have a driver's license. You must register to vote. If over a certain age, you must obtain a fishing license in order to fish. If one disobeys these and is caught, they must answer for their disobedience and face the consequences according to the law. Now, all what has been said is a preamble to understanding what the New Testament means when it says must or must not. The following is taken from a lesson by Phil Sanders from the In Search of the Lord's Way program, which can be heard on Sunday mornings. You can also search for these on the YouTube channel Search TV Ministry. So, let's start. The things we must do according to the Bible. We must follow Jesus. Acts 4.12 tells us, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. John 12.26 tells us, If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Again, we must believe in God and Jesus as Savior. Hebrews 11.6 tells us, And without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. John 8.24 tells us, Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Next, we must repent of our sins. Luke chapter 13 and verse 3 tells us, I tell you, no, uh, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Romans 6.11 So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.13 For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if, by the Spirit, you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Next, you must be baptized. John 3.7 tells us, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Acts chapter 9 verse 6. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you must do. Acts 22.16. Now, why do you delay? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Next, we must worship in spirit and in truth. John 4 verses 23 through 24 tells us, but the hour is coming, and now is here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 and 9 tells us, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Next, we must pay close attention to God's teaching. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. Next, we must obey God rather than men. Acts chapter 5 verses 28 through 29 tells us, We strictly charged you not to teach in his name, 
Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. Next, we must help the weak. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. In all things I have shown you, that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And finally, we must all appear before the judgment seat. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 tells us, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Acts chapter 17, verses 30-31 through 31. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now He commands all people everywhere to repent, because He has fixed a day on which He will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom He has appointed, and of this He has given assurance to all by raising Him from the dead. So you see, there are things we must do. Have you obeyed these? Those are our thoughts for today.